All right. Well, uh, yeah. uh, turning yeah. then to, to the other parent, what can moms do? And of course, I'm going to say uh, use inclusive language. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a dad and you should say moms and dads every time. No, I'm not. I'm not calling for that whatsoever. When he says, OK, moms, follow me. I follow just as long. I don't protest. And it's always my kids who are like, and dad. I'm like, ah, it's fine. Who? It, it doesn't it doesn't um, matter that much that I'm the the one male teacher or, you know, one or two uh, male teachers in, in in the group. And that's fine. Uh, it, I, I think we, we care less about being identified as anything, uh, uh, barring any political connotations to that. By which, again, state regulators, he means a, a male facilitator uh, in in no professional capacity. Yeah. No, I'm not. It's just introducing <laughs> concepts. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so so include. It, it, I think that's easy to do for just include dads, though. But uh, you know, have have ways that dads can be a part of the co-ops and the 4Hs, and also in the picking the curriculum. He will come over here and and here's what I'm thinking uh, of this, and and you know, you may have. Uh, um, you, you may have an idea of what you want to do, but maybe you don't know uh, exactly wh which one to do. So when we were thinking about um, uh, a spelling curriculum for my oldest, my wife tasked me with the finding the, the, the one that I wanted them to do. And I looked between the two and here's one, they kind of just kind of give a list, but then this other one has the concepts and why is the English language so screwed up and are there rules to it? And I'm like, there are rules to spelling in the English language? No one has told me this. I am 40 <laughs> years old and I have to learn now that there, there, was, a, that there was a semblance of order to, to spelling in, in the English language? That, that's amazing. <laughs> so, so that's the one that I went for. And, and um, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, well, we're gonna have to go through this again. And I am perfectly fine with that because I, I want, I want the order and structure, the, the the bones there, and then you can glob on, and you can make your whole person that way. It's 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 if you if you understand there's a pattern, if you understand there's a structure, and that that actually coincides well with the learning style of of my oldest. So I knew my child, I knew how she learned, I knew w what would be the the uh, areas that she could pick from. Uh, but my wife is the one that said, okay, now's the time that we should start the, the, the spelling aspect uh, to their education. And she asked me to actually make real measurable decision. And it's not just, you know, they can use purple pens or the pink pens. Well, you know, that, that, that's, that's the, that's the give, give your kids that, that decision in their education. But for the dads, include them and ask them real questions. And force those kind of small decisions on them uh, that um, that include them into it. And and uh, you're showing there the the proper place of authority. You're 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 um, in the in the biblical basis and you're you're saying this is important to us. And and hopefully that comes alongside. Obviously, you're not going to be able to force dads who don't care. So um, unfortunately that that's not going to be the message, but that's one area where sometimes dads feel, well, I don't want to be the tutor. I don't want to do this because it's just, I'm, I'm always going to be the outsider to that. And guess what? We, we want to feel included sometimes too. And so holding us by the hand and bring us in is something that you have to do with us as well, because just like how women have their own proclivities to uh, child rearing, so do men. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and, um, yeah, it, it is, um, what, and I, one of the things I would say is, uh, um, if, if dad is, um, doing the leading as he should be in terms of family worship, um, then, um, then just just as just as I think it's a good idea for dad to come alongside and say, okay, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing with the curriculum so that I can so that I can come alongside and and be more holistic and integrate um, is uh, uh, so that mom be looking for ways to integrate what we're learning in family worship with 
with what we're learning because here, here's why, look, um, I know for a fact that we are not, we, we have in Calgary and now in Lethbridge, we have, we have chosen, uh, Christian education for our children. And that is, that is not the best education available for those who are simply listening. That was in, in, uh, uh, quotation marks. Um, <laughs> um, the, uh, they didn't get, they didn't get the, they're, they're not, they're not receiving the objectively best, um, academic education, um, that they, that they could be receiving in either place. We have better options in both places. Um, but for us, the very important, the most important part is that we want our children to realize that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of us. Mm. I've already said in what I think is this episode, um, <laughs> that, that, uh, um, that, uh, my daughter said, you know, how are they supposed to know when a Tyrannosaurus lived? They don't know that God made the Tyrannosaurus, <laughs> right? Is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't know that, you haven't learned it. You do, there, there, there isn't, there isn't, um, uh, there isn't the possibility of having um, a strong academic education without the without the fear of the Lord. It's not just that. It's not just that that would be undesirable. It's actually impossible. What you will actually, what you, what you will actually produce is what um, I can't remember who said this. Um, you will actually produce uh, highly technically skilled barbarians. You're not actually producing educated children um, in that way, right? And um, uh, and so, uh, and actually, I, the the person who who introduced that phrase to me, um, he 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 immediately went to um, was it McNamara, the guy who was in charge in Vietnam? Yeah. Uh, he 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 said the epitome of a of a highly skilled barbarian. Um, <laughs> did you find the quote while I was? Uh, Stephen Muller. Okay. Uh, president of John Hopkins University. That, okay, yeah, that sounds right. Um, and um, uh, so, it's um, a, it's just to pull the quote: Universities are turning out highly skilled barbarians because we don't provide a framework of values to young people who more and more are searching for it. And yeah. that that fits in well with our show because we may have ushered the phrase Christian worldview one or two times uh, in in the show. So absolutely. Okay, <laughs> so that's definitely the quote I was remembering. So yeah, thank thank you. Good pull. Um, is, Usually, uh, I'm doing that on Jeff's show for yeah, him yeah, in real time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> he's doing it in the chat on on our show. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, uh, and and there's usually more delay. It, it's it's amazing to see how quickly you how quickly you work because you're usually watching it on a couple second delay, and That's then right. the delay of typing it into the chat. And uh, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're good. Um, anyway, so. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, um, again, it's not, it's not, it's not that the, the better education, um, is simply undesirable. It's actually not better. It's actually not an education. It's actually just the, the production of highly skilled barbarians. Um, and, and the, uh, and so, so. Having recognized that, then what? Then what's the what's the imperative in Christian education? What it's to it's to I I um uh, uh I think I think this is even in Alberta law, and it's it's the perfect word for this. It's that it, it permeates mm. every other aspect of the education um, that. That there, there is no, there is no aspect of um, the education that is not 
Christian. Um, that that the uh, the Christian education is permeating all aspects of the education. By the way, that is a legal requirement uh, for Christian schools uh, in Alberta and any 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 specialized schools uh, there are legally required for the the specialized aspect to permeate um, the the curriculum and uh, culture of the school. Um, and uh and so um and and uh and yeah it's the perfect word for christianity needs to needs to permeate every aspect of uh of the education so that's one thing that moms uh can be doing is taking taking what we're learning um uh in family worship and making sure that it permeate and i know i know moms are already already doing that but just in a yeah uh, like I, w- I want to encourage, I, w- I want to encourage that in a in a very self conscious way. How can we, uh, how can we, how can we apply uh, very specifically what what we heard in the sermon this Sunday, or what we learned in family worship as a family, or mm-hmm. what, or or what, um, or or what, uh, or what. The kids came home talking about after they went on a nature walk with dad and they and they they learned about the way god made ducks <laughs> or whatever <laughs> right? Like, right. like so yeah. so yeah so I, like that's the that's the that's how you integrate this this um godly design of as you walk by the way it's also what keeps your kids from uh from seeing the subjects in isolation yeah which, I, was, which, I was thinking which, about that too it's 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 you know d- dads have been scared correctly into n- not going the route that their forefathers have where you know oh i my kids know that i love them i told them once and if it, i've changed my mind I'll, I'll 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 let them know and so it's uh you know your your daughters will um uh either get the love of a father or they'll find someone who can. And so mm-hmm. we've been scared correctly into that. And so it's like, are, are you willing to uh, let another entity uh, in, in whatever shape or form that takes on uh, of this curious mind finding, you know, well, what happens uh, when drug use is, is, is uh, uh, introduced to the body? And so, is it going to be you having the frank conversation on like what dare did dare being the, the, the old school way of, uh, of telling kids that, uh, you know, smoking weed is akin to funding terrorism and it also kills small children when you run them over. Uh, and then you realize, Oh, but you know, uncle John smokes weed and he's just fine. And then you try the harder drugs because well, they lied about weed. What else are they lying about when it's, crack cocaine and funny enough the government lied a lot about crack cocaine too but for different reasons <laughs> but so having that um first first touchstone point being and both parents too i think about like the talk that every father is supposed to dread uh having that with both you know the the, the mom taking the dad into it and having those weird conversations that even the dad might not like going to get whatever pads or anything uh, from the store and just go, all right, but suck it up. You, you birthed the child and guess what you have to do (laughs) everything. You have to do everything. And having, having that, um, that double barreled approach of both uh, of father and a mother there at those opportune times and realizing that it's that, you you never know which uh, point in their life is going to be memorable to them. You know, I, I, I only recently watched uh, Inside Out 2, and so I'm always talking about like, oh, here's a, a core memory. But, you know, I, I think about, I have a whole bookshelf of, of books that I got for my kids that I read when I was in fourth and fifth grade when I really adopted uh, more of a reading persona. But those ones were instrumental to that. I wanted to have those so that my kids could add to it, but also see the books that inspired dad 
and I might not even like those books anymore, but those were the books that did it. And having that, mm -hmm. uh, that moment with both a dad or a mom or both a dad and a mom, um, you never know what those are. And so you want those important points to be uh, introduced within a Christian worldview, as you're saying, very important, must permeate. But I, I do agree that's phenomenal uh, word for that. But then also <clears throat> be be attacked from by both sides and, and introduced from both sides. If I can add one more things that mom can do, uh, I know we don't do the whole five love languages anymore, but uh, there are words of affirmation that dad really enjoys. And I don't know, maybe I'm just talking for me, but I was, uh, we were talking about the Vikings and I read the little sentence paragraph of introduction. I said, oh, you know, uh, there was uh, probably this thing that helped them uh, uh, navigate uh, that we don't know actually exists, where it was a stone that could have cut through the, um, the, the clouds and they couldn't uh, help to circumnavigate better uh, by sunlight or stars. And so that was a big thing that got in the way of a lot of people. And then I read the next paragraph where they said exactly what I did. And my wife went, how did you know that? And kids, your dad knows so many things where he'll do that. And man, I, I, I didn't need any, any bump and pay. I didn't need anything else. But that, that one, that one comment was enough to, to, you know, lift spirits and to do it in front of my kids was the biggest benefit because um, I, I want them to take it seriously. History is important. And then uh, there are things that you can know before you know that you know them, that you're you're able to um, to share with others, and uh, that it's a it's a sticking point for times like these, where it's like, hey, I know a thing. Let me add to the discussion. And my daughter actually did that today. Where we're reading the story together, and she's like, oh, these people are eating oat cakes, but there's so many oat cakes, they got to get sick of it. The very next line is. And they were they were going to be very sick of oat cakes, and she's like, "Ah, I did the thing that Dad does," and it was a, a giggle moment for all of us. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. yeah. Be, so I've got one more thing to yeah, add, perfect. Uh, which is, is all right. So uh, help for mom because Dad Dad probably already gets this, um, but uh, and so this is help for Dad if you didn't. But, but I I think I think. Uh, Mom needs to understand why this is important. Uh, we have a rule. Um, it's not actually a rule, especially not in the way that we that I'm about to phrase it. But but this captures the the uh, uh, spirit of the rule. Always read the plaque. Um, mm. And and uh, so <laughs> the reason I think Dad already understands this is for the same reason that I think God told Dad to put up the stones so that kids will ask is. <laughs> the uh, the uh, men more naturally um, uh, are going to put up the stones to memorialize a place and are more naturally going to want to read the plaque. So, Mom, um, you can help in two ways. If Dad is there, you are on team, always read the plaque. <laughs> You're excited about it. We're going to read the plaque. I know, Mom, you probably aren't excited about reading the plaque. Dad is, you're not. That's the most common. Mm. <laughs> but, but mom, pretend you're excited about reading the plaque <laughs> because the kids, the the kids will pick up on it if you're not. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Um, and and it's, um, and it's extremely helpful. Um, you will learn, you will learn more about the history of your place, wherever it is you live. You'll learn more about it by just reading the plaques. Um, mm. with it whatever whatever plaque is available at the park that your kids play at or at the um uh on the walking trail or do you guys have um do you guys have the roadside uh plaques as, as so much in in your area some places oh, do some yeah places sure don't, usually it's right? connected to a park or something like that in memoriam or a uh, uh, war okay. memorial or something like that yeah Okay. Yeah. So, well, yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them were specifically earmarked for like war memorials and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but I got one uh, in, in Alberta, we have them very frequently as like, it's just like, um, it's just a, a, a spot to kind of get off the road, stretch your legs, throw some things away, 
maybe uh, maybe there's a bathroom there maybe there's not maybe there's a playground there maybe there's not but it's um but that's where they'll put you know the the just rest areas they just pull off the road for a yeah. second is where they'll put um the uh alberta's history uh and and uh, and you can read um uh you can read about something that happened near here <laughs> um, and, and uh um and uh, you can get uh you can get so much local history and be so much more connected to the place where you live and and um and uh like in in ways that you never um they're never gonna pick up from uh from a, a regular curriculum uh how how would a regular cu- curriculum replicate <laughs> the hyper local um oh yeah sort of uh uh sort of history so um but i didn't i didn't know that where we now live um is a is is the place where the first uh flight across uh across the rocky mountains was <laughs> uh was completed um uh, and uh uh and and it happened exactly as you might imagine um some guy from world war one got bored uh, <laughs> and, and, and decided you know i think i could fly across the rocky mountains <laughs> um, and no i'm not going to wait for planes to get a little bit better where i can do it without rocks on <laughs> without cliff faces on both sides of me <laughs> um, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna do it right now when it's at its most dangerous it will ever be that's right um, <laughs> i survived the kaiser um, i can survive the rockies yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and so um uh uh so so yeah anyway it um and so so that happened um you know he landed he landed right here in Lethbridge before um, uh, before stretching his legs and flying up to Calgary, which is where he actually wanted to be. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, and so uh, it's, uh, it, it's stuff like that, that you're, where, where would you go to find that in a book? Right. right. <laughs> right. And it's, it's, um, um, but you can, you can pick up, you can pick up all this history that will connect you to the place that you live um, by just by just reading the plaques, by just by just going going to the historical markers um, where you live. So I, I'm, I'll encourage um, mom. You're probably less naturally enthused about that than dad is, <laughs> um, but uh, but but for the sake for the sake of your kids and 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 all of you sort of getting that connection to the place you live. It would be good. It would be good for you to be enthused about that. And even, you know, if you if you take your kids to the park and Dad's not there, see if you can get them to read the plaque. Right. They might actually. Your kids are probably actually interested in in doing that. Yeah. Uh, or oh, Dad's not here. I'm going to read the plaque. <laughs> you don't know how exactly. to read. <laughs> like okay, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the the speeches uh, uh, book. My youngest, who's you know starting her sight words, Dad, I want to read the the speech today because uh, Sissy read it uh, the day before because it was a smaller one. Like, well, you need to be able to learn to read. <sighs> well, all right, can we do our sight words afterwards? It's like, oh, kid, you fell right into my trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 